Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason, a 90 minute pair programming show where we're going to learn something new and hopefully you're going to get booped on the brain. Today with me on the show, we've got Doug Sillers. Doug, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. Ah, yeah, it's great to have you here. Um, so for those of us who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us the kind of the quick rundown of who you are, what you do, all that good stuff? Yeah, so I do a lot of performance work, at least, you know, for the web. And so my focus has been how to make the web fast and how to make native apps fast for a really long time. Um, for the last few years, I've been focusing a lot on media, how to make images fast. And uh, that's also obviously led me into video, which is what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, I think we all kind of have some ideas of what to do with like responsive images and how to make images smaller. And video is just like a whole other ball of wax, which is really fascinating. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and like video is, um, it just, it feels like a different animal, you know, because I think that for, for many of us, uh, like for me, especially, I've been building websites for a long time. You know, I, I, I built my, I wrote my first code back in like the nineties and, um, and, you know, doing video was more or less just not possible, right? Because you, you needed, you had to write flash code and you had to do all this extra stuff. And so when the video element was introduced, it was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Right. But then you had all these issues with like bandwidth and, and getting the encoding right, because you know, maybe MP4 would work here, but it wouldn't work over here. Like right. this, this advanced format would work on this, on this, but you know, not over here. And so there was, there were all of these like really complex issues that came in. Um, and I think most of us just gave up. We started using YouTube, we started using Vimeo and we just like hoped mm -hmm. for the best. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, it's, it's, it's complicated and like, if you try to read any of the documentation, it's like it was written for, you know, people who stream video at the BBC, right? It's yeah, the experts. Yeah. And like for us to figure it out, it's like, I don't have time to figure this out. Yeah, for sure. Right. And so, um, but, but a lot has changed. And, and I think that like, especially as the platform has matured, um, there's way better interop between different browsers. You can play, mm -hmm. you know, their format availabilities. Um, and I think you're going to talk a little bit about different tooling that makes it easier too. Um, totally. Ooh, wasting no time today with the Corgi Parade, huh? Uh, <laughs> what's up, everybody? Um, yeah, oh, and we got everybody in the chat today. We got, I just see, I see Angel, I see Jordan, Tony's here, Nikki's here. What, what's up, y'all? I uh, appreciate you coming to hang out with us today. Um, so, so I think like, what, maybe before we talk about like, the technical bits of video. Maybe we should talk a little bit about why we care about video at all, right? Like, what are what are some of the things that that video kind of does on the web that that are otherwise difficult? You know, I think if you do it well, it's super engaging. You know, I I, I think we've all been to web pages where there's a background video and you just kind of look at it and you're like, whoa, that's mm -hmm. really cool. And if you can do something that gets people to stay on your page a little bit more often or come back to see it again or even show their friends because like what yeah. you built was really nice. Um, I think that's really good. I think there's a lot of ways you can really, you know, if, if you screw up an image, you know, it might be a megabyte or two and like that's not ideal and there's right. easy ways to fix it. But when you screw up a video, <laughs> like you're talking tens of megabytes that can easily <clears throat> just cause problems. And you know, the, the problem there is, of course, if I'm on a blazing fast internet connection when I'm building the page, it always looks awesome to me. And I'm not right. thinking about the person on hotel Wi-Fi that's getting four megabits per second. Yeah. Well, well, I remember uh, I went a few years back. I went to Costa Rica. And um, while I was there, we, my partner had to do a bunch of work on, like, something that didn't get resolved before we left on vacation. And so while she was trying to do that work, I decided I was going to watch a YouTube video and it was like a minute and a half long. And I think it took me an hour and a half to download that minute and a half long video on the hotel Wi-Fi. And that, I think that was one of the first, the first times that I truly started to understand like the gap in, um, in web performance, like, 
because I was on the same hardware. I had a, a high price device. I had a you know all the all the gear was right, but that that Wi Fi connection was just you know unusably slow. Totally, totally. I was just last year. I was like, I'm going to get this huge. I was writing this blog post on how people screw up video, and I was like. I'll do the testing while I'm on the train. I know I won't have good cellular, but I can use the train Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. And I logged onto the train Wi-Fi in the UK, and they're like, "You get 150 megabytes for the next 35 <laughs> minutes." And I was like, "I get to load the page once." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, and and you know when you when you start thinking about it that way too, like with data caps and stuff, um, there are people who pay by the megabyte still. Like that still exists. And and if you're right. not respecting that, you're gonna you'll burn through somebody's data cap in like one page view. Um mm-hmm. that's that's brutal, especially with how much it can cost. because uh, when you get into pay by the megabyte, that is uh that's a that's a spendy way to get data. Well, and, and I'm in Europe right now and I'm traveling and I'll go to a country that isn't in my roaming mm. and I'll be like, I wonder how much it'll be, and it's like Four euros ninety nine a megabyte. Holy crap, that's brutal, right? And so it's like, yeah, data's turned off when I go to that country. I mean, there's no doubt. But um, you know, I'll just go buy a SIM at the at the you know the the tobacco store or whatever for the three days I'm there. But like, yeah, geez. you got to check because if you don't, and you go to one of these web pages, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's absolutely, ugly pretty quickly. Yeah, and and so um, and I think that's the that's the part that's kind of sneaky about it too, because like with video, um, you can set video to load in the background, and it, it kind of like progressively loads as you you get on the page, so it doesn't make the page feel slow, but right. in the background, it's just burning through data. Um, well, it, go ahead. No, oh, sorry. If you ever look like a web page test load of a page that has video, the browsers are super smart. And they're like, oh, that's video. We're loading that last. Mm-hmm. So if you have a web page and it has video, that's always going to be the last thing that loads because the browser knows I need to get the CSS, the JavaScript, the HTML, the everything else. Mm-hmm. And then we'll worry about that giant behemoth of a file later. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I think like, we could probably sit here and, and wax philosophical about how, how you know, the, the ways to do it right and wrong and all the, the risks and stuff. But I, I think it'll be what, what's probably more practical would be to mm-hmm. dig into some code and, and to look at, like, how, how can you do it the, um, like, the no effort wrong way? Like, I need to get this video on the Internet. Here we go. And then let's look at how, like, legitimately how much more difficult it would be to make it better. Um, Great. So let me switch over into the desktop view here. And I have, you sent me a, uh, a video website view. So let me make this bigger. That's the wrong button. And, and there's a dog in that video too. There they are. Ooh, there's the dogs. Yeah, we just adopted the black one. Her name is Mala, so. Oh, that's cute. And so this, um, this is a, is this a playable video? Well, so that's the thing. If you look at the HTML, you know, I've got a video tag, uh-huh. right? I've got, you know, I've got the source. Um, but if I don't have controls, it's not playable. So if you actually open up DevTools and you reload this, it's going to download the video, but it's just a picture. All right. So let's take a look at, at the damage here. Um, so, so if you actually just, just click media, if you look on the filter, click media. Media. Okay. So yep. we've got, here's our video. Yep. And it came in at. It's 30 some megabytes. 30 something megabytes. That's, yeah, that's it, a big. It didn't, it didn't all download, which the browser's kind of smart. We got okay. 7.2. Is that what it's saying? The 7.2 megabytes. And so it, it started downloading the video and then it looks like it, it stopped when it decided it wasn't using it. Is that correct? Yeah, so the browser default, and we're going to talk about this, this setting, but the default is to download a percentage of the video just in case I press play in the future or you press play in the future. Mm, yeah. And so there's a, there's a preload preset, and the default is metadata, which downloads like the first 5 or 10% of the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's that's I mean that's that's nice. Like it's good that it right. does that. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a little terrifying that, that like ten percent of the video is seven point two megabytes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And um, you know, this is this is totally like the example is I took this video with my phone, mm-hmm. I put it on my computer, and then I, you know, I uploaded it to Cloudberry. Right. right. Like so this is just the raw off my phone, put it on you know, boss said, put the video on the internet. All mm-hmm. right, video tag, source equals, paste in the MP4 and go. Well, and you can see this too, like being a, a pattern that somebody would follow if they like make a recipe. They're gonna, they're gonna shoot some video on their phone of them doing the thing or explaining something. They're gonna put it into something like iMovie or, or whatever they use to, to edit video. And then they're gonna export that to an MP4 and mm-hmm. they're just gonna upload it somewhere. Like maybe they'll upload right. it to YouTube or maybe they're going to do something like this where they, they host it mm-hmm. and then they, they create a video mm-hmm. tag. Um, and if they just do that, like it's not really because they're, they're out to be lazy or they're out to, to cut corners. It's like, you just don't know, like you, here's a video, right? Mm-hmm. Like I need to get this video on the internet. How am I supposed to know yeah. that I, that I just, you know, cost somebody money to, to load this? Yep. Now, if you go into the vid- into the video tag and you add, add the attribute autoplay, okay, video autoplay. Yeah, it's right there. That's cool. It'll refresh, but it's not autoplaying. And is that and expected? This is one of these weird tricks that it, it's not going to autoplay. But if you press so it's not supposed to play, but browsers kind of know if you ever press play on a video that has autoplay, and it'll remember that if you went to Doug's website and you press play before, it'll autoplay videos the next time you visit. Okay. So there's like these weird heuristics built into browsers, and each browser is slightly different. So you've actually never been to this web page, but so it's just not going to play it. Okay. Now, if you want it to autoplay automatically, you can add the attribute muted. Autoplay and muted. Oh, Autoplay wait. I think I, you know what I think I need to do? I think I need to fork this because it's not, it's not, it's not letting me, it's not keeping my changes. So, um, autoplay muted. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it's playing. And, and the reason for this, and I, I joke, I think it's because Chrome engineers sit in on meetings too. Right. You and really played to your audience. Back, with the dog videos, this is this is a this is a dog stream. <laughs> I, I, I know it is. Well, and so the day we were actually looking to adopt Mala, I was going for a run with my wife, and and I kid you not, it looked like the corgis. Mm. There were like eight corgis running at me as we ran down the street. <laughs> That's, and they surrounded us, and so we had to stop. We got kisses, right, and then we continued running. I my immediate yeah my immediate response if I were to see that would be to lay down on the ground and just hope that they get into a pile. Like the puppy pile is all I ever want. I was, pu- I was pushing the little guy. There they are. <laughs> Thank you, chat. I-, I was pushing the little guy in the stroller, and they were just jumping up on the stroller. And you know, <laughs> he had chocolate, so there was probably some of that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. There's that. Uh, so um, good. So good. So it, it'll autoplay if it's muted. And the reason for that is, you know, obviously if you're sitting in a meeting and you're browsing on the web and you're not paying attention, um, you don't want it to be like blasting the sound. Right, right, right. That, and that makes sense. Like um, I've noticed that uh, there, is, there are some controls that are happening place where like the browser, uh, it won't let things play automatically. It won't, um, it won't play sound effects in a tab unless you've mm-hmm. interacted with that tab. Um, right. so like I noticed that like I, uh, I built the thing for the overlay, like the, the Corgi parade that just happened when I test that, if I try to run it and I just open it in a browser, it won't play. It'll, uh, it'll see the animation. I'm like, why is my thing broken? But as soon as I click on the window, Chrome's like, ah, oh, you're allowed to do that now. So then it'll play the sound when I, uh, when I, mm-hmm. yeah. So the next cool thing we're going to do is we're going to add controls. So if you just put controls next okay. to autoplay and muted. So if you get on the bottom. Ah, there we go. Okay. So yeah, now I've got controls. We've got the controls. And so, you know, if you wanted to put a width of 100% so it fits too, you could do that just so that it's not 
Yeah, let's do You could do that in the video tag actually with equals 100%. There you go, that works. There we go. All right, so now we've got the ability to actually like play. Um, and if I take Start off the muted, it. I should theoretically be able to hear it too. Which I can, I don't have the, I forgot to pipe the audio out of my yeah. MacBook into the video, but. It's, it's, it's the sound of a dog running around and some birds tweeting, so it's nothing too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so what's really cool about this is like the HTML5 HTML video tag is so powerful because if you take out the controls, it's perfect for a background video. Yeah, right? I mean, this, this that, would be great. And then you, uh, you can autoplay and mute, and it, it's a background video, right? Mm -hmm. it, no one has any control, but it plays. If you add the loop command, it'll just loop. Just like this? Yeah, just loop. And now it'll just keep playing the video over, and it's, a, it's an animated GIF. Oh, fascinating. Well, that's powerful. Right. Um, and so what's great about that is this video is 30 megabytes. Uh -huh. I, I don't know how big the GIF would be. It'd be insane. Oh, it'd be huge, yeah. Especially for something this long. And, and we can, it, it actually won't work. I tried, because it's cloudinary, if you actually take the, um, if you take the URL to the MP, the MP4, mm -hmm. And you just open it in a new tab. Copy that. And paste it. Yeah, it, it's not going to work though because it's too big. It's going to actually oh, it like exceeds their. On us. Um, but what you? It, yeah. So, um, so what you can do is let's make it smaller. If you go, we're going to add a cloudinary parameter after. Ooh, I'm a, I have a lot. Are you there? Still with me? I'm coming back. Just a second. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. Sorry. All right. Yeah. So yeah, actually, one, one million gigabytes. That is roughly the size of this as a GIF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What you can do is put the parameter um, EO underscore six. And I put that here, right? I'm not, I'm still running behind here on the screen. There we go. Well, that's, I mean, that's pretty powerful. So, um... and so what that's doing is that's now it's the first six seconds. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, so that's the, the end offset of that video is now six seconds. And it's also 80 megabytes. Right. Woof. Um, that is brutal. <laughs> right. and, and so the reason, f the reason for that is actually GIFs don't have any compression over time. Mm. So... Um, it's actually, if it's 30 frames per second, it's literally 30 GIFs like flashing through. Right. And then um, let me just send this to you. I've got a link to share here. Um, where's the chat? Oh, I can send it to you on Twitter, right? Yep. All right, let's do that. All right, so this link right here. Link right here. And I'm going to get a little nerdy here, but this is the, actually the GIF spec from 1990. Oh, I, this might be the first time that we've actually opened up a spec on this show. Right. So, so, so just do a find and type in animation because you don't want to scroll through it to find it. It's Appendix D. Got it. is not intended. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> right? That's you're that's, not you're not supposed to use gifs for animation. Well, so we've all been holding it wrong for years. 
you know, if the spec says it, you know, I know we all ignore specs, but like, that's what it cracks me up. Yeah, that's, that's pretty funny. Um, but <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, definitely, definitely doing that wrong. Um, but, uh, but now we can, you can just loop a video. We can just loop a video and that's way better. Uh, so, but that, that's still like, okay. So we're looking at this and like, I've got my video here and this video is still large. Like if I, if I come back out here and I change it back to an MP4, um, and we just have the first six seconds, like we're going to, oops, I don't want to save it. I want to reload it. So this, this video comes back and why did it come back as, oh, I reloaded and it didn't do the thing. That's the GIF at 80. MP4. Yeah. I think it's like four. Okay. So when we get the MP4 back, the first six seconds is still like 2.2 megabytes, which isn't uh, compared to a GIF night and day different. Right. Still quite a bit to load for a background image or a background. And, and we can, we're going to do better. We're going to make it better as we, as we continue on here for sure. Okay. Um, we, we can start talking about how, what we can do to make it responsive. Um, but you know how, like in let's the original do that. video, um, let, let's start by doing that. Like, should we, should we turn this into, um, like a hero image with some text on top of it and stuff and, and, you know, fake it out? Sure. Go for it. Okay. So let me, let me add, uh, we'll do like an H1 and like, and then what we can do is we've got, uh, this video wrapper. So we'll make that. Um, position relative, uh, we'll give it a width of a hundred percent. Um, and then with the H one, we can go position or actually we don't need to do that because we can make the video position absolute. And we'll set it to top left. I think that should do it. Okay, good. And then with our H1, we can set our Z index to like 10. And that didn't work because it needs position relative. Yes. Okay. So then I can, uh, we'll set like some padding of like, we'll go you know, 80 pixels or something. Good. Um, I'm going to turn the margin off on the body so that we get a full like hero. Um, and then for this, we'll go do like a color of white text align center. Uh, font family. Will this work? Yeah. Um, then we've got that and we should probably add some kind of an overlay, which I'm not going to do. So instead I'm going to hack it with text shadow. Uh, so we'll go zero, zero and like four pixels black just to make sure that it stands out for us. And that yep. is the easiest overlay that I could do. Um, there we go. We'll make it just a little bit bigger too. Too big, too big. Okay. Perfect. Happy with that? Oh, need to need to set the box sizing, or else it's gonna we're gonna have to do a bunch of adjustment. So box sizing, border box, to make sure that our padding doesn't break the the scrolling of our uh, widths. Okay, so that's a, a really basic hero box, but that'll do the trick for us. Right. All right. So, you know. Things that I see people screw up a lot on, and, and I, I talked a little bit about preload equal the preload function where it downloads a little bit of the video, no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, you can, I've seen developers use the preload equals auto, and that's for when a video isn't playing uh -huh. automatically. And that just tells the browser, download the whole darn thing, whether or not somebody presses play or not. Right, so that, that does seem like a lot. So that, that's something that isn't ideal. And then the, the other thing that I see happen a lot 
and it's the the CSS that's at the bottom here, and it made it that 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 was already there in the in the CSS. Yeah. Oh, I think I deleted your comment. Um, yeah, no, don't worry about the comment at all. But basically, all this does is if you make the screen smaller than five hundred pixels wide, the video goes away. Mm hmm. And that seems that seems like a good thing until you reload the page on a mobile device. And it's, it's still going to download. Right. Display none doesn't mean download none. Oh, that's not good. Right. So, you know, this is probably the biggest anti pattern I see when it comes to video. They're like, well, we don't want the video to show up on mobile. So we'll just hide it. Yeah. Okay. So how do you so mitigate if, this? So what, so what you can do is now if you reload this page, you're still going to see the video in the... Um, All right, so let me reload the, this in page. In the DevTools. Oh, wait. I need to... Uh, I got to fork this. Give me just one second to, yeah, no. to make a copy. How does it let me... You know, if you just type, it'll reload the page, and you'll see... Oh, then it, it should have done that already. All yeah, right. it'll just reload the page. And then just go over the dev tools. Yeah, clear it out. Type. You know, whatever. Let's see. That is not just the wrong one. Hmm. I think it, it's going to wait because it's, I think Code Sandbox or Code Pen might be doing smart things to uh, avoid, uh, like, something. Um, but maybe. It's at the focus at the bottom. There it is. Boy, that why that was that was hard for me to find. Um, okay, so here's my here's my fork, and I can refresh it, and it doesn't break on me. Okay, so here we can see that the video loaded, and that makes sense because the video is visible. But if I make this right. big, or I make the the window narrow, and I reload. It is still downloading that video. Ooh, that's rough. Ooh, and it downloaded the whole thing. Yeah, because it's auto-playing. Ooh, that's, that's rough. It's auto-playing in the background because the browser just thinks it's auto-playing the background. The CSS yeah. is just hiding it. Okay, so that's no good. So how, how would we go about fixing that? So you, with images, you, you, we've got media queries in the picture tag, but that mm -hmm. doesn't exist for the video tag. Right. So there are a couple different ways to do it. The way I've got written here, it's commented out in the JavaScript. So if you go to the JavaScript bit. Okay, let me just pull this up all the way. Just the first section of code there that's commented out. Okay. And so let's walk through what this does. So this is getting the, the hero video here. Mm -hmm. And then we set the path to the video, which is currently set here. Yep. And on window load, you are calling video source. Where does this get called? Oh, it's so right what you here. Do is, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to delete the source tag in the video right now. OK. In the HTML. So just get rid of this altogether. In, in the HTML. Yeah. And so now when the page loads, the JavaScript is going to say, is the screen big? And in this case, it's, Bigger I got it set to 900 okay. in, the, in the JavaScript. So because the screen is, and now you have to reload it for it to work. Okay, click the Save button. There we go. I didn't like something. I probably typoed in here. We'll make it 500. Just change the number to 500, and we know it'll work. <laughs> Unexpected token it doesn't like I I type some something in here. It doesn't like. It's probably hero video. All right, chat. Let's play. It's showing an error in the invalid or unexpected token. Yeah, that's. That's great, but where? 
You know what? I cha- I think did we change the name of the video? I don't know. Hero video, hero video. I don't know. Big video. Does anybody anybody see what's going wrong here? Big video goes here. Video source. We've got window dot onload. Unexpected token. What is the unexpected token? Yeah, I go, no, but when I click the red dot, it just shows that. So if window dot inner width is greater than 900, then. So what's supposed to happen here, if, it, if it's a big screen, it puts the source in the video tag. And right. if it's a small screen, it doesn't put the source in the video tag. So the browser says, ah, I've got a video tag, but I can't download anything. I wonder if it's just yelling because it's declared out of order. No, it doesn't like that either. All right, so let's start here. We're going to start with just this. OK, that, no error there. What? There's no, there's no way that this is an error. Document. Okay. Oh, there's two opening comment tags at the bottom. Someone says. Okay. Is that it? Maybe just delete all that. Oh, it just didn't, it just didn't like that bit. Are you serious? Oh wait, no, it's still, <laughs> it's still unhappy. What are you unhappy about? Oh, now it's now it's unhappy because I broke another thing. So hold please. Okay, so now we can get rid of this. Good spot. Who who noticed that? Jay, thank you very much. There we go. That was it. That was it. Rogue comments. Okay, code sandbox. That was a that was a weird weird hill to die on, but we're with you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah. so now we're we're basically saying like if it's if it's bigger than five hundred, uh, don't add it. Let me save this or, before I do the thing. And now I'm gonna reload. And this was still, I think it might have been. Oh, it was still recording. Let me try this again. Okay, so here are. What are you doing? No video. Let me close this. Reload. Do I just have a bunch of these open? No, I just have the one open. Let me redock it because this is clearly not working for me. Um, dock it over here, and then we're going to reload this. Yeah, you end up with so many tabs. Yeah, I get it. It's impossible to see it, but all right. And so I'm going to go into the media, and we get it here. Um, and so then here we reload. It's like forcing it open. Okay, so I think CodePen is letting us down in this this regard because it's doing. Let's see, is this full going to give us what we want? Yeah. All right, so full view is probably going to give us what we want. So if I open this all the way, okay. No. And then open like no the video. mobile view. Yeah. So then if I open it, wider, now we don't get it. Okay. So now. It does load, but we, we have that desired behavior. So if it's too small and we reload, we don't get a video. It, it does yep. not get loaded. So that's good. If we then drag out, now we're over 500. We have a problem because it doesn't become visible. But if we reload, it works. Yep. So we're, right. we're getting there. We're, we're getting better. Yeah. Okay. You so could the, make that you could make the JavaScript more responsive, right? On page resize to refire that JavaScript, you know, whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. And and so we would basically just have to add like an on resize loader. Although that's a pretty edgy edge case. Like no one other than than developers are really like dragging their windows to different sizes to see what happens. Um, right. it's, it's, you know, it's not like, it's not a bad idea to fix that, but I would say in your, your list of priorities, it's probably not something to put right at the yeah. top of the list. So now the next mm. thing, actually, yeah, Sia just made a really good point. Changing the orientation of a device is 100% a good reason to, to run that check. Okay. So scratch that. D 
do fix that. That is a thing to fix. <laughs> for, for a code pen demo on on a on a podcast, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we can we can keep uh, we can keep moving. Um, so, like, that's the way to do that, right? Mm -hmm. the, you know, the the next way we would probably go to get any further on that would be maybe go to streaming. Okay. Because if you if you build a stream, you end up with different size videos at different bit rates, mm -hmm. and the JavaScript player will choose the size of the, the video to show on the screen. Oh, nice. And is there a way to automate that? Um, to, in, in which way to automate it, I guess. Well, like if, if I wanted, so if I wanted to do this and I, um, how, how do I get to like streaming? How, is that a thing that we can just do? Or like, do I have to we, build a bunch of stuff? We can do it. Let me send you the snip. Okay. To put in the HTML because I have it here. We're going to use video JS. Okay. Um, and the reason we're going to use video JS is because some of the video players are actually not responsive and that just drives me crazy. Okay. Right. If you're going to build something like that, you really want it to be responsive. So there's the HTML and the JavaScript is there, but I'll send it to you anyway. That's, that was the stuff that was commented out that was giving us fits before. Okay. And so what I'm doing... Ooh, it looks like it... Did it short... No, the URLs are there. It just shortened it in Twitter. Never mind. Okay, so I've got a snippet here. I'm going to comment this, this part out real quick so that we can go look at it. Um, and then you've got this section here, which I think is down at the bottom here. Right? This is... Yes, this is the same code. Okay. So let's take a look at what we have here. Um, so we've got CSS for VideoJS. Mm -hmm. We've got our video, muted control. And it's in the VideoJS wrapper as opposed to a video wrapper. Oh, you so you're doing custom. OK, all right. So we're getting into like web components here. That's mm -hmm. kind of cool. Um, and then we load this video JS. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these dependencies in in CodePen, and then pull this one in over here. Okay, and then we swap this over to video JS. Okay. And then we need to tell it to use it. So we can. And then you need to put the source in, because remember, we killed the source with our JavaScript. Oh, we need to actually. Oh, I get it. So we're going to we put the same source in. Now, this, this doesn't trigger that problem where it's going to start downloading again. Um, so the problem right now, it doesn't matter about the size, because what's cool about what I've built in in this stream is that I've got sizes that work all the way down to the smallest screen to the biggest screen. Okay. So the CSS is all messed up now. It's probably downloading a really small version of the file. But what's cool about uh, video streaming <clears throat> is you can serve a very small version, right? You can serve a two, 360 by 240 version of the video and it'll play and not use a whole lot of the data. Okay. But if you're on a fast connection, you could serve 1080p video. And it'll actually do that based on the size of the screen as well. So it'll serve 1080p video to a screen that can do 1080p video. But if you're on a really crummy little Android phone, it'll serve maybe the 540p video for you. Gotcha, okay. Um... So this That's is the reason why, like when you watch Netflix, like sometimes the first three or four seconds looks really, really crappy. Mm, okay. They're I... serving you the really low quality video just to get it started. And then it snaps up to the higher quality video once it knows your network speed. Is that going to work? I can't remember which one of these it is. There's a, there's a way to do this that I don't remember. It might be that video JS is fighting with us too. Um, Whatever, this is fine. We'll just roll with this for now. But so this this is giving us um, a like a full width 
hero. And if I look at the, whoops, if I refresh, save it, refresh, go to media. What's funny is it's not media now because they're .ts files, which sometimes show up as text files. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Okay, so let's go into here. So the M3 U8 is the manifest file, and then the video is actually in a .ts file. Okay. Oh, here. And these are way smaller. Yeah, this is tiny. under a megabyte now. So that I mean, and that's the whole video, right? It might be. There might be a couple .ts files, but you're you're still getting in like a megabyte range. Yeah, and compared to the 32 megabytes that we were getting before. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's actually look at what comes in from Cloudinary. We've added some JavaScript, we've added some CSS, right? So we've added some other dependencies as well. Right, okay, so let me, let me um, just check what we actually get from Cloudinary. So now with all of what's coming in from Cloudinary, looks like two megabytes. Yeah. And then I can't tell if these are coming in from the cache or not. Because it does look it, like they get loaded twice. Is that right? So the what it happens is they're byte range requests. Oh, OK. And the way manifest works is there's like a parent manifest that lists all the different available bit rates. And then uh -huh. there's child ones that list all the little segments. So like there's there's more files that come down, but it ends up being less data because it's actually more curated to both your network speed and the size of your screen. Mm -hmm. Well, that and that makes sense. And like you know what what we're doing here is not uh, this is even though it's still like video inherently is going to be relatively large. Like you're you're sending a lot of data. This is a huge amount of information to mm -hmm. show all of this on the screen. So the fact that we were able to go 30 right. times smaller um, with, right. with relatively little code is pretty, that, that's pretty powerful. Right. And so the trick then is, of course, like <clears throat> if we lowered the size that much, is the quality still there, right? Is it still going to look good enough for, and you know, we can eyeball it and we can say, yeah, that looks pretty good. But it'd be really great if we could automate some of that to really figure out if what we're doing is giving the expected experience to our end users. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, basically there's two, there's three metrics that I think about when video are being delivered. And the first one is how long does it take for the video to start playing? Okay. Um, does the video stall while it's playing? Right? If, it, if all of a sudden the dogs freeze in, in mid run, you're like, something's wrong with this video. Right. You're not happy. It, it, right. it, pulls, it pulls you out of the, media, the immediacy of the video if all of a sudden the dogs stop running. You're like, uh, my internet is broken again. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing is, does it still look good? And there, aren't, there weren't a lot of tools out there to help people do this. Right? How do we know if the video is still going to look good or if it's going to start quickly? And so let me send you a link here. I'm actually curious what happens if I, I'm going to go on fast 3G because slow 3G is like always a nightmare. But let's see what happens when I go right. on fast 3G. Well, with streaming, you're probably going to be all right because it'll just pick a really low quality stream. Yeah, we got a low, so you can see there's a lot of like visual artifacts, but it's not juddering. And that's actually, that's pretty cool that it just did that. Yeah. And so the JavaScript has taken care of that for you. And so you, you pulled in video.js. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that actually is? Like, where does that come from? It's, it's an open source project of people building video players. Um, and a lot of the commercial tools that you can buy are actually built on top of video.js. Is this the one that you're... Uh... Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's make sure we send off a link so people can check it out. Um, it looks like, yeah, there's a bunch of 
like customization and doc stuff that you can do. It's on GitHub. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's super easy to get started with, and I tested some of the other uh, players like this, and they're not responsive by default. They only look at the network speed, and so you can be testing on a really small phone mm. on a fast connection, and is downloading 1080p video that you can't even watch. And what I like about video.js is that it has the responsiveness built in. Mm -hmm. So it knows if you're on a 540p screen, there's no point in downloading 1080p video. Let's right. just go with the one that, 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 you're, that you can see. Totally. Okay. That, that totally makes sense. Um, well, cool. So, so at this point, what we've done is we started with a like video shot on a phone, um, 32 megabytes, just uploaded and then delivered. And we've gone through and kind of cleaned that up a little bit. We're using Cloudinary, um, and then we're taking advantage of the video.js library to um, to load in a like optimized version. And we're sending M.3U8, which is a, a format I've never heard of before, but that's that's a streaming format. It's HLS streaming, which is the Apple streaming format. Okay. And that's the manifest file. Got it. And so, so basically, this isn't actually video. This is telling, this is information about what can be streamed. And then the browser makes decisions based on other information on like yep. the, the browser itself and the connection and all that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a text file. So if you open it up, you can actually see what a manifest file looks like. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's, let's do that. If you really want to nerd out on something like that, that's pretty fun. Let's, let's nerd out. I browser like... downloads it. So you're going to have to open it up in a text file. Let's see here. Can I get this out into its own? Get out of town. Um, maybe it'll work here if I just, are you going to open that or are you going to make me download it again? It <sighs> should just open in like text edit or something like you, that. You, you would think so. What is it going to, um, all right, let's hold this. It's a weird format. I actually have a Chrome extension to read them because I look at them a lot, but. Okay. And so I'll just open, uh, it was called there. All right, and so this is teaching us, like th this is information for the browser saying, see, bandwidth, codecs, and resolution. Yeah, so that first stream okay. is 186 kilobits per second. That's the bandwidth. Uh-huh. And then the resolution is 320 by 160. And then that's the link to the Cloudinary URL. And it has all the Cloudinary cropping and width and height and encoding stuff. Nice. Now, did you build this or is this something that was generated? It's generated. So if you go back to the URL that we used uh -huh. in, the, in the code pen, it says like, um, See where the uh, uh, SP underscore HD, that's saying build me five, diff build me an HD listing of different um, encodings for streaming. Got it. Okay. So it's, like, it's just a Cloudinary parameter and you say do this and it builds the six streams for you. Very cool. So is um, a good question from, from Eco in the chat. Uh, is this going to is this something that the browser is interpreting or is it like video js is interpreting this so video.js is interpreting this however hls is something that was built by apple so you can just throw you could take that m3u8 and you could throw it into safari and it works just fine oh interesting okay so so but basically only, but only safari so it's not really that useful and does that mean that like in Safari, Video.js would do nothing? It would just serve a video tag and, and Safari would do its thing? I think probably Video.js is still running it. I don't think it may just bow down, you know, back off and let the browser do it. I, I haven't actually figured out what is. Sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. 
Um, all right, so I want to see what this video JS script weighs, and that comes in from what was it ZDN? Yeah, it was. I just used Fastly, maybe. Zen CDN. Okay, so let's take let's take a look at what comes in from Zen CDN. And our scripts are ten kilobytes for the CSS and three ninety two for video JS, which that's that's pretty hefty. Um, so, pretty... but compared to thirty two megabytes of video, so you know it's trade offs. And and I think you you get bigger wins for this not with a fourteen second video of a dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the win is when you've got a twenty minute video of, you know, someone giving a presentation. Sure. Yeah, and, and it yeah. seems like this is something that um, you know what what I'm noticing is that we're using uh, Cloudinary URLs. So where was it here? Um, yeah. So something that we could also do is like we could just make this a smaller video. Yep. So here we've got these these videos and I I'm going to take a guess that if I come over here and I yep. do something like this it's going to work. Yeah. This will give us a, a tiny little video. And if I reload this that video is how big? 268 kilobytes. So yep. something that we could do, like if this is a hero, uh, one thing that I've that I've always seen and, and really liked is uh, let me stop that because it's making noise. Uh, what you can also do is like a lot of a lot of the time these are not going to be uh, completely in focus. They're going to be a little bit out of focus, which means that they can be super low quality. Um, right. And you can even do things like slightly blur them. CSS supports blurring and and stuff like that. So that you can you can take a really tiny video and stick it in a background and it'll look beautiful because you've masked the the like artifacts with with different overlays and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and you know I've seen the web pages that have the beautiful 1080p 40 for 30 frames per second, 10 megabit per second video, and then they add they mask a blur over it, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> Like, why don't you just make the video really crappy and it'll just look like it's blurred and yeah. it'll be like 500K and we can all be happy. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, it, it, it's, I think the takeaway from this is like, it depend. this is always going to depend on your use case because, you know, with with something like this where we want just some movement in the background and, and maybe we've got some like B-roll that looks really cool and adds to the, the ambiance of the website. That makes sense to compress the hell out of it, make it really small. It doesn't matter if it's got a bunch of artifacts. We're muting it anyways, you know, and just like mask it up with CSS and, and throw it up for, for cheap with no video JS. But yep. if you're doing like a product demo and you're going to be serving up this really, you know, five minute video with professional voiceover and it needs to be HD, then suddenly it makes sense to, to trade off that 300 kilobytes of video JS because otherwise you're serving like a gigabyte of uncompressed video to somebody on a like a 3G phone. Yeah. You just reminded me of another thing is, you know, this video of my dogs mm -hmm. is silent right now, right? Mm -hmm. But we're downloading the audio track. Oh. So actually if you go to the URL of the just the video of the dogs. Uh go to the video of the dogs. It's the one that we just made really tiny. Yeah, right here. If you add the parameter AC underscore none, we just removed the audio codec. Oh, and look at that. It just got even smaller. We just muted it. That's super smart. Because of video, of the video track, and you can look at this with like tools like FF Probe, which are built into FFmpeg. There's a video stream and there's an audio stream. Mm -hmm. And even if you mute the audio stream, there's still an con empty container that gets downloaded. So if you remove that container, you just made the video smaller. And if you're looping in, the, if it's like a GIF or mm -hmm. a background video, you should remove the audio because you're going to make it smaller. Right. And no one's going to miss it. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's a great point. Like these, these are the little things that I think we just don't know. Like I never would have known that that was a thing I could do. I would have just like served the video 
and assumed that the audio was stuck in there unless I downloaded it and opened it up in some editor and like specifically ripped that part out. And even with that, it wouldn't have occurred to me that the audio data is going to add to the size because I just think of video as being video and audio as being audio. It's, you know, to me, they're like, this is a bucket of video and video includes audio and this is a bucket of audio and audio is just audio. Yeah. And it, so, I mean, even with tools like FFmpeg, mm -hmm. which is cryptic and a pain in the butt, but you can Google the answers to figure out how to do it. Right. And you can remove the audio stream pretty easily. So FFmpeg is a really awesome tool. It's, it's, you know, a command line tool that just, you know, basically does anything you could possibly want with video. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for demos like this, doing it in Cloudinary, just changing the parameters on the URL and letting it go and not having to upload videos to servers and stuff. It totally, it's so much easier. Um, but like removing the audio is a huge thing that we can do. Um, and just analyzing what you're sending across. Um, yeah. So one of the things that FFmpeg has is it has a probe that tells you what your video is made of and it exports some JSON. So let me send you, I, I actually got really frustrated at having to run it all the time. So I built an API for it. Oh, nice. <laughs> let me just send this to you. Um, it's a, FFmpeg is like, it's a, I, I've used it and it is a, um, it's a beast. Like you could write a, you could write a PhD thesis on how to use FFmpeg. Mm -hmm. And you're specifically talking about this FF probe, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll drop this and then, um, you sent me, I sent you a link. Oops. That's the wrong place here. Is this, is this the right one? The it's clarity. a really long URL. Yeah. And so basically what this is, is you can see the parameter. It says URL equals. And then you drop in any video. Is that right? Any video URL. And it'll give you, the, it'll give you all the information about that new video. Okay. So let's see. We've and got streams. You've got uh, the first one is the video stream because it's H264. H264. Okay. And then, and then the second one is going to be audio. Dub, lyrics, oh, interesting. All right. You can see ABC, okay, ABC. And then MP3, and then at the or, oh, wait, no, this is, this is in it. Okay, so this is the first bit here. And then this is the audio track. Yep. And then I think somewhere down there. And then there, there's, yeah. a, there's another bit. The last bit tells you about the file name, the number of streams, and it'll give you the bit rate and the duration. Got it. Okay. Right? And so this was a video, I think, that was a background video. You can see that it's like two minutes long, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, I, that's sort of a pet peeve of mine. Like, who's going to sit at the top of a web page to watch a background video that's silent for two minutes? Mm -hmm. Like, that's a little ridiculous. And then the size was like, 18 megabytes, I think. It is to the right. And the bit rate, bit rate is high size. Yeah. So yeah, big. Hundred and wait, am I doing that right? 180. One, two, three, one, two, three, 18 megabytes, yeah. 18, yeah. I just found a web page that had a 239 megabyte background video. Uh, on mobile and i was like oh, yeah you know like yeah 10 megabit per second oh that's brutal um yeah but yeah so that's I, like that's a that's a very cool tool um being able to get that information I, I i feel like that's one of those things that like we're little down the rabbit hole when we start talking about ffmpeg um because that's that's where now we're like using tools to try to analyze performance and, and i think what is really interesting about what we did first is we, without having to like really get deep into the nitty gritty of what makes a video a video, we're able to just kind of take advantage of, of a tool like Cloudinary, which, you know, the chat, you'll know, I love Cloudinary. They, they make a lot of things really easy, but like we can just kind of say, hey, what if we just get rid of a whole bunch of junk out of this video and serve a smaller one and we take a 32 megabyte video down to 147 and all we had to do was copy paste some settings. That's dope.
Like that's that's yeah. the thing that I think is really powerful here. Um, is that we we were able to take like we uploaded this is a video from your phone uploaded to Cloudinary. You copy or I I copy pasted this string here and mm -hmm. was able to drop the size of it by like almost uh, like just unbelievably huge drops in, in the amount of downloaded video. Um, How do you get the stream? So when I upload the MP4, I change the parameters of the URL to M3U8 and Cloudinary automatically transcoded it into a stream. Mm -hmm. There's a whole section in their docs, which is which is pretty good about this. Um, and that will somebody before do it. this asked if you could put text and stuff over videos, and you can. Ooh, that's a that's a good point. Um, what if? Ooh, all right. I <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do something. Um, so let me get this video. I'm going to download it. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm going to go to my own Cloudinary console. So I built something totally ridiculous with overlays and video, so I'm sending it to you. Yes, please do. So you've got, you've got a tweet. It's a bit.ly because the URL is a little insane. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. Um, okay, so let me get... All right, I want this to work so bad. Uh, I, I have a theory that if I just like upload this video into Cloudinary, let me pull this down, and then go into my media library and drop this into, is that gonna put it in here? All right, so I'm uploading this, this video. And then, come on, okay. I can copy this. This is going to make me so happy if it works. Then I can come out here and I can, before the upload, just do, just work. It works. It's work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Okay. And then, but, and then we can do like, um, I think I've got another one to do a video overlay or like a, a logo overlay. Yeah, um, it'll work. And so we, you can basically like now I could watermark my videos on my site, mm -hmm. which is holy crap is that powerful. So the other one to send, so I just sent you one and this is using video underlays underneath images. And so what I did in the video that I just sent you is I found the face on people and I removed their mouth oh, and I put oh. a video underneath their mouth. This is going to be horrifying. It's going to be oh, horrifying. Oh, it's horrifying. And she's reciting green eggs and wait, ham. Wait. It's me. I eat them on a train, not in the dark, not in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a uh, fox. I will thanks, not I hate them it. in a house. <laughs> I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them uh, this anywhere. Is, this is nightmare I fuel, Doug. I do not like green <laughs> eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam. I am. Okay, yeah, that is that is straight terrifying. Um. <laughs> and I did that all, I did that all with Cloudinary, so like. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I, but like that's, that is really, um, that is, that's some powerful stuff, like holy crap. So, uh, so whether you want to, whether you want to like, what did we, what, so yeah, you, you did this, um, I think we had this, yeah, you can put some, you can just put some text overlay on something. You can do some just straight terror. Uh, <laughs> yeah. get court, yep, get some corgis in there. I like, I like it. We're bury <laughs> the the chat was so horrified by this that they decided to bury the screen in boops. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well played, y'all. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Well, good, good. I think we're, we, 
where do we even go? For? I think I just leave now, right? Like we're done. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I totally destroyed the entire conversation with that one. Okay. But yeah, I mean, there's some fun stuff you can do there. I there, you can also do green screen stuff with Cloudinary. Wait, you can? Yeah, let me send you this one. I love so. Uh, this is something that I've noticed is like every time that there's a um, a stream where we use Cloudinary, it inevitably turns into like a oh look at this fun thing that I did with it. <laughs> so this is a blog post I did where I was using. I just threw a blanket over a shrub, like seriously, and I was able to make it. I was able to remove the yellow from the background. So, so like, you, that was the is... video. Nice. Again, it's just lame, but if you scroll down, I could put a picture behind me, <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm in Pisa or I'm in Paris. Nice, nice. And so. It's you pretty just, amazing, you actually. Can, like, I just threw a blanket. And then to go to the bottom, my favorite part is at the very end here. Is this, oh, that's with the, okay, very end. Yeah, click that one. Here? No, it's, 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 a, it's, it's not that one. It's the last one. It's the very end. Up a little. So then I used my shirt as a green screen and I put myself on my shirt and then I put myself on my shirt and then I put my, it's like Doug inception. It's a lot. It's a lot, Doug. <laughs> 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 this is great. I, I'm, I'm very into this. Um, th this is like, this feels like the sort of thing that is what I want to do all of the time. It's like, what's the, if we, if we take this, <laughs> What's the most absurd conclusion we could reach if we just keep pushing as far as we can go, right? And I feel like Dugception is really... <laughs> <laughs> it was about as absurd as you could go, for sure. I'm into it. Um, well, so, okay, so we, to, to pull us back and make sure that we didn't miss anything, because we're, we're right. kind of coming up on time. Totally. We... Uh, so what we've done thus far is we've looked at two solutions for um, for boosting video performance, and they're kind of there's a little bit of nuance to each one. So the the first thing that we did was we made sure that the video um, isn't fully loaded if you have it hidden visually. So what we're doing here is we're basically only injecting the source if the if the screen is big enough for that video to show up, and that prevents mobile devices from downloading. So I think if there's like one takeaway that was a big one for me, it's that display none does not prevent the browser from downloading video. I did not know that, and that that's a big one. Um, yeah. So then we looked at VideoJS, which VideoJS is a reasonably large library, but it will help us with videos that we need to deliver in a streaming way um, by like, only serving the right resolution for the screen. So it took a 32 megabyte video, dropped it down to under a megabyte and streamed it so that we got an, a really high quality performance, even on like a slower 3G connection. Um, totally. Then we looked at the uh, the ability of Cloudinary to, I can't remember if I still have the one that doesn't have, I think I closed the one that didn't have an overlay on it, but um, we just used the settings from the stream to, to shrink our video down so that for like a background clip that's just a looped few seconds of b-roll or something that's adding atmosphere just drop the quality all the way to nothing and put an overlay over it or something and uh and you know that'll only be a few hundred kilobytes as opposed to 32 right. megabytes um right. so what else oh there's a question um Eric Vicetti, uh, how does live streaming work and why is Rewind so difficult and rare? That is a great question. Do you know? Because I, I don't know a whole lot about like live streaming technology. So live streaming is a whole other beast. Yeah. And it, it, it sort of depends on how it's implemented. But I think... I mean, the whole idea of live streaming is to try to keep up with the actual stream itself. Mm -hmm. um, because like if you're watching a football match, 
you want to make sure that you're not getting further and further behind on the lag, right? Because mm-hmm. you're probably already like 20 or 30 seconds behind real life. And if it keeps lagging, you know, you want to make sure that it's constantly playing and it skips over any of the jumps. And so the problem is, you know, you know, I've been in a pub where all of a sudden the screen freezes just as the guy's about to shoot at the goal. Mm-hmm. And then like the next thing you know, he doesn't have a shirt on and he's standing. Right. It's like stands, jumped right? five seconds into the future. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's always, uh, that's yeah. And you're like, uh, Oh, I guess I missed the goal. Right. Um, yeah. So like, why can't you rewind? I just think it's sort of like fire and forget at some point, right? Like when you're doing a live stream, the whole goal is just trying to keep as close to real time as possible. And so going mm-hmm. backwards is like not really what it's designed to do. But see, it's almost like you would need to, you're, you're pulling in all this data live, but then the stream is actually a little bit different than the recording, right? Because the stream is going to be like adapting and maybe dropping frames or trying to com- like if you watch zoom if uh if the zoom stream lags it will attempt to speed up a little bit to right. uh to catch you back up to real time and so you'll see somebody kind of like do the robot voice and they'll they'll lag and then they go into like fast motion for a second to catch you back up to real time um yeah. in the replay that's not going to happen so you you've got the stream like trying to keep you close to real time in this in the same moment as it's throwing this data into like a recorded video and the ability to like make that easy to okay so we're going to jump from the stream to the recording and then if you like jump back to the beginning you're on the stream um like twitch is kind of okay at this uh youtube is pretty good at it but it's it sounds like a really complicated problem it sounds like eric also kind of knew the answer so it was a trap the whole question was a trap uh Um, oh, question about WebM, which is a great question. So the WebM format yeah, for video yes. is, um, is supposed to make performance better, right? It's supposed to be a, a more like web friendly format for video. What, what do you know about that? Can you still hear me? Did we, did we lose you? Yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were like pretending so to be frozen. Like, it, I don't want to answer that question. I lost you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can actually, you can actually change the URL to WebM there and it'll load the WebM. Oh, cool. Okay. Let's just try that. Right. Cloudinary will do that. If you change the suffix to WebM, it'll just turn it to a WebM. Awesome. Let me reload that. So we can see if I load, let's see, this is the actual video. And we can see the content type is video webm. So it just gets on the fly re-encoded. Um, is there a way to, cause like this is great, but this is not supported on all browsers, right? It is not supported. It's supported in Chrome, Edge, and uh, Firefox, not in Safari. Okay. Is there a way what- to like, so like Cloudinary with, Images will just serve the best format. Does it do the same thing for video? They, they do have an F auto, but I haven't tried it for that. Ooh, okay. So let's maybe do an experiment. Let's see what happens. F auto, and I'll change it back to MP4. And then I'll open up the tools and let's just see what, what does it load? It served an image. Image it's going to say MP4 is the extension. Just look inside and see what it served. It served image WebP. Okay, so maybe that's not quite ready for prime time because that that doesn't seem correct. Um, all right, so so that is maybe not uh, maybe not what we were looking for, but that's okay. It's uh, like. But what you can do is if you, if you go back to the code pen. I'm here. Let me pause this. You can add a second source. So you can make the first source the WebM, and then the second source the MP4. And then the browser just falls back. And the browser picks the first one that it knows what to do with. Got it. And would you do the same thing with a stream? Like, would that, would that make sense to like do something like this, where it was like, you know, WebM, and then, 
MP4. Yeah, it, it, so it would probably, it was, you know, in this case, it would probably do the stream. My guess is it's playing the stream right now. Okay. Yeah, let's, um, let's, let's see. Let me save this and let's reload and let's see what comes down. Uh, let's get rid of that. Anything called Mala. And it got the stream and it is not downloading the MP4 or the WebM. Okay, so that seems right. That seems like what we're after. Let me make sure that it's actually the, the one that I expected. Um, yeah. yep. Did it dump my sources? No, here's the sources. So they're here, and they're just not getting added. That's cool. It's just ignoring them. Yeah, it's, it just takes this. It's sort of like if you have a WebP versus a JPEG, it'll always take mm -hmm. the first one it knows what to do with. Yeah, well, that, that answer, that was, a, that was a more comprehensive answer than I was honestly expecting. I was kind of like, yeah, it kind of works, but, you know, just use whatever. Uh, that's <laughs> like, no, do it like this. It's going to work. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it, what's cool is that's like HTML5 spec. Like, this is mm -hmm. what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Yep, that is, that is and, very and You cool. know what? While, while there's some things that kind of frustrate me, like the sizing isn't there, um, all the rest of this is like HTML5, so it's in all the browsers, and it just works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's slick. Like this is some really cool stuff. Um, is there anything else that we should touch on before we before we start wrapping up here? You know, I think the big thing is is if, if you're putting a video and you don't want to go to video.js and you don't want to do streaming, mm -hmm. just look at the size of the video. Right? I mean, it's not hard to say this video is 100 megabytes maybe we should think about making it a little shorter or a little smaller yeah. before we start serving it up on the web um and it, you almost don't need tools for that <laughs> <laughs> right you should just look at it and be like you know if we put 35 megabytes more on the web page it's gonna be you know Basically, like if you have video on a web page, expect the video to be over half of the download on your web page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, so, you know, if you've got budgets and you're saying the web page has to be under X megabytes, it's going to double if you start adding video. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, that actually gives me a uh, a good idea that we can do with our last um, our last couple of minutes here before we before we break. I want to take a video of mine. Okay, and I'm going to, I'm going to upload this. Marissa's going to kill me for putting this on the internet. It's so good. Uh, my partner is Marissa. <laughs> Chris, Chris, are you still watching? You're going to enjoy this very much. Um, so this is a video uh, from Marissa's birthday where she dressed up in a unicorn onesie and did a dance. And so let's just take a look. So this is a, a 58 megabyte video. Um, and so let's go over and just kind of look at some ways that we can make this better. So we've got, here's the dance. And when we, when we filter down to media. Uh, kill me. Okay. So <laughs> So here's our, our video, and it's uh, it's 58.2 megabytes. And so, so I'm... Anytime Cloudinary does anything, it automatically does a video codec auto. So the first okay. thing you can do is just add VC underscore auto, and it's going to lower the quality. It's going to lower the audio quality a bit. It does just some basic optimizations to your video. OK. And if you do that, I'm guessing we're going to be about 17. Didn't like this one. Did I put it in the wrong place? No, that's VC auto. VC auto. Did I spell it wrong or something? Sorry, my eyes are. VC auto. Let me make sure that one that we we saw work does what we expect. Is it still trying to encode or something? Does it need it? No, it's it? VC as in video code. VC auto. It just doesn't like that. Why 
does not like that. Okay. Tell F Auto. With F Auto, there is no need for VC Auto, but we saw that the F Auto breaks. So try the uh, well. Try the Q Auto. Q Auto will work. Q Auto. Doesn't like that one either. I wonder if you've got some set. Is it like, look at the video, see if it's set to private or something for the video. I don't know. Like, it's public? Yeah. See, I see uh, Duran is in here too, who works at Cloudinary. Um, maybe, well, it's okay. Maybe maybe this was uh, more than we wanted to do, but it. But my guess is it would have gone down to uh, you would have been about fifteen with just doing that one parameter from fifty-eight. Let's see, um, it shouldn't need to be. Yeah, so let's see. We're here. What's what's the? Can you take out the? Oh, because it's in the learning with Jason folder. Is that right? Yeah. So this is this is the actual public ID. And then, so any transformations that we want to add in here should go there. Right. What? It just doesn't, is it too big? Is that the problem? Like it's over 50 megabytes no. and so Cloudinary just won't help? So you know what? Take out, the, take out that transformation. Just try to make it a WebM. See what happens when you just turn it into a WebM with the suffix. Yeah. So, so it either doesn't like this video itself or, uh, or I'm doing something wrong or it needs a minute to think but whatever's going on it doesn't uh doesn't like that one that's okay that's funny we'll, I've we'll, never... we'll, we'll figure that out later i'll i'll light up i see dom in the chat i'll find him um <laughs> cloudinary team i'm coming for you you're going to answer so many questions uh <laughs> and so we yeah we may we may be able to do just a follow-up on on uh the specifics of that with with somebody from cloudinary um but in the meantime we were able to do quite a bit of fun stuff today. So we got, uh, you know, we we did some text overlays on dogs. We we looked at uh, this little little shop of horrors. Um, we saw Doug's very good like double green screen inception, which is just wonderful. Um, and we were able to take the size of this image or this video here that it started out at thirty two megabytes, and I think it the final the final tally that we hit. Let's run it again is it came in, go to all, search for Mala. We've got 733 kilobytes coming in at, at this size. So this is the stream. Um, yep. that's, that's some powerful stuff. Like that's really cool that, that we were able to do that. Um, especially given like how, you know, we, we screwed around for an hour and a half and we were still able to do all of that. Right, totally. Well, cool. So, Doug, this was, uh, I think this is very practical, right? Like, these are things that we can actually take out and use um, immediately. Right. Like, we're going to see videos every day in all sorts of formats. Like, if you're using animated GIFs in a website, swap them over to video, add these optimizations. You're going to see huge drops in performance. Um, where should people go if they want to learn more about this and or find out more about you? I lost your audio. Oh, uh, you lost my audio. That's okay. Uh, I'm... Yeah, but I think you said, where should you go? And I would say, um, <clears throat> if you want to read about this stuff, I've been blogging about this on my website for a long time, Um Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'm on Twitter. Um, like, I, I'm really passionate about video. I think, you know, it's the way the web is going to go. We're going to see more and more video. And as people are adding more and more video, we're going to see so many more people screwing it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Jerome came back. Uh, we have, it, the culprit is a legacy account. So I have an older Cloudinary account. I need to go to the admin channel, or my admin panel and actually check a box to enable uh, the, the F auto. So that was what happened. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't Cloudinary, it's I have an old account. I need to enable some stuff. Um, but, all right, so everybody, Please go follow Doug. Uh, it looks like you're going to see a lot of fun stuff and some truly horrifying stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
and uh, and definitely go audit your videos. Like if you're using videos, you're using animated GIFs, go give them a look and make sure that you're not burning a ton of bandwidth unnecessarily. Um, if you are looking for a way to do that quickly, make sure you go check out Cloudinary because it does make that really, really simple. Um, oh, one more finally, question before I have we go. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, have some, I have some open source tools that are on both my blog and on GitHub that will walk through um, doing some audits on the videos you already have. All right, so go check out the GitHub for some tools. Um, uh, and so the media queries were actually pulled out of the video spec. Interesting. In like, in like, it was like Chrome's, I want to say like 60 something, like a long time ago it was pulled out. Do you so, know uh, why? So I actually talked to a guy on it and he said, well, cause streaming fixes a lot of that for you. Like, because it'll do the, the variable bit rate and change the size. I don't know why it was pulled out. It, it does. That, that does make sense though, because like, if we if we think about it objectively, the the solution is streaming. You you want the adaptive bit rate. You want to adjust to to bandwidth speed. You want to adjust to to viewport size. And media queries aren't going to do that as elegantly. Um, it is interesting that it was like decided to not even give the intermediate fix. But like it is it's uh, streaming as we saw today is is reasonably approachable. Like it it doesn't require deep contextual knowledge you you just have to put the right tools in place and you're going to get that that uh, yep. benefit. um all right so with that i think we uh we are good to to call this one so doug thank you so much for coming on um yeah, thanks for having me yeah this was a blast and make sure that you stay tuned chat because on thursday we've got anjana vakil coming on we are going to build some live updating data uh, data visualization using observable. It's going to be a ton of fun. We are going to, it's, we're going to unleash chaos basically. So um, definitely mark your calendars for that. We'll see you on Thursday. Chat, stay tuned. We're going to raid. Doug, thank you again. This was a ton of fun. We will see you next time. Yeah. Thanks so much.